starting on channel 431 or visit rogers.com today. inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center on this beautiful Wednesday night in the Durham region as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club take on the Coburg Kodiaks in this major series lacrosse matchup between two teams who are fighting to climb up the standings. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. My name's Jack Moore. This is Andrew Osmond. And Andrew, two teams in a four-team league who have already seen each other this season, and that was Brooklyn's only win of the year so far. Yeah, you're right about that. It was back on June 19th. 16-8 was the victory for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club over the Coburg Kodiaks at that time. As we take a look at the standings now, you'll see kind of the one win on each side of these clubs so far this year. In the young season, we still have a number of games to go, but they have faced each other so far. But and when we look at those standings, though, we see six nations at the top there. Peterborough right behind, and these two right here at the bottom of the league. But like you said, Jack, it's, you know, it's early on. They've only faced each other once. And every game, because there's only the four teams, means a lot. So we'll look for either side to really get the win here. And, uh, and, you know, it means a lot. They jump each other in the standings, if that's the case, if they can get a win in this tight, tight league. An important pivotal game in this league as well, as Coburg has only played four games. Brooklyn's played five, but the Kodiaks are playing four games in seven days this week. Brooklyn doesn't play again until next Wednesday. So the next time that Brooklyn plays, the standings can be a lot different in terms of where these two teams are. Yeah, and I wouldn't say it would be interesting to see kind of how Colbert plays it tonight. It is the first game in this long stretch, like you said. Brooklyn obviously is going to lay it all out on the, on the, on the floor. But as for Colbert, don't know really today if they're going to kind of go all for it here facing one of the bottom-seeded teams so far this year. It, they might do that this weekend or later next week when, you know, they've had a couple bangs and bruises um, to, to monitor throughout those games. They might change their strategy. And those ones here tonight, I don't really expect any change in terms of going for the win here. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club also last week picked up their only tie on this season. They got out early, a 2-0 lead on the Six Nations Chiefs. That got dissipated quite early on. Six Nations came back. They tied that game 10-10 after a 10-minute overtime. Nobody able to come away with the victory. So Brooklyn now standing with one win, three losses, and a tie on the season. Coburg only playing those four games, a win and three losses. So a very important, pivotal matchup in this series early on, especially only four teams. Supposed to be a seven-team league this year, but three teams backing out for the 2022 season. So we're going to see how important these games are really coming down the stretch. Yeah, and for Coburg, you mentioned they just got their one win and they got three losses. This one here would mean a lot to go to two and three. You know, Brooklyn's been able to get that tie at least and, and not look too, too much below 500 so far. Before we get things started for opening face-off, let's send it down to the floor and O Canada. Thank you. We're now with the huge rise for the play of tonight's national anthem.
An important pivotal matchup in an early season major series lacrosse game. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club taking on the Coburg Kodiaks. And we take a look at tonight's starting goaltenders, Andrew. Yeah, we'll take a look there. You're looking right there at Nick DeMood. He's 0-1 so far on this year. Not getting quite the minutes as his counterpart, Riley Hutchcraft, has so far this year. So look for him to try to make an impact tonight. He's sporting a 14-7-4 goals against average and an 8-17 save percentage here tonight. And for the Coburg Kodiaks, they have Kevin Oralman starting in net. Two losses on this early season. His brother Steve is the backup goaltender, and they've split the minutes early on in this year. And we will see if they go with that combined tandem through the rest of the season or if one goaltender, one brother, is going to start to pull away down the stretch of the year. We get set for opening faceoff. Chris Willman for Brooklyn going up against Ryan High. And we are underway from Whippy at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. And Brooklyn has first possession of the game as they look to work it up the floor. Here's Robinson for the lacrosse club as Brooklyn looking to set up early on. Chris Bushi out there as well for Brooklyn as they set up in the offensive zone. Kiernan fires a shot. That gets stopped by Orlman. And Coburg will get a reset and head up the floor on their first attack of the game. Curtis Conley setting it up. Keelan Pilon with possession and works it around. Alex Simmons only played in one game this year, but he has a hat trick in that one. Looking to set up the offense early. Went crashing hard to the net as Pilon works it back to the point. French stepping down, fires a shot. That gets kicked out by DeMood. Now once again, Cam Milligan Setting things up for the Kodiaks. Pilon works it off to French. He fires. That gets stopped by DeMood. Loose ball right in front of the crease. A continuous battle. Coburg thinks they have it. It squeaks free, and DeMood pulls it back into the crease. Good defensive stop there by Brooklyn. Yeah, they were under pressure there as uh, Coburg was able to get the rebound and have another couple attempts on net, and a bit scrambly there at times, but they were able to control it and now get it down the floor. Chris Bushy sets up and drives towards the net as he kicked it back into the corner for Launchbury. Now here's a chance as a shot gets stopped. Rebound gets stopped as well. Chris Bushy couldn't convert on the rebound. And Brooklyn picks up the offensive rebound and sets up again. Brooklyn swinging things around to the top. Now driving to the net. That gets stopped by... Oralman as Brooklyn gets it right back. Another quick shot, Oralman another save, and he's being tested early and often in the first two minutes of this contest. Yeah, he's had to handle a few of those quick rebounds and really be strong there as the shot came in right off the rebound within a matter of seconds, and he was able to stand tall and keep it a scoreless game. Alex Simmons works it back to Travis Longboat. He steps back and fires. DeMood got a piece of that one. Now continuing to control Joe French. His brother Ben French on the offensive zone the last time as Simmons fires a shot. That gets stopped. Rebound out in front. Unable to convert was Riley Curtis. That ball flicks into the meshing and we'll get a stoppage and Coburg will get a reset in the offensive zone. Dylan Hutchison kicks it off to Milligan. Drop back for Simmons. Alex Simmons sends one towards the net. Nice cross crease pass. But Riley Curtis had a foot in the crease, so Brooklyn brings it up the floor. Now here's Connor Kiernan. He waits for the rest of his team to set up. Brooklyn looking for another good chance here as Kiernan couldn't get a stick on that one. It was a nice backhanded pass by Ryan Lanchbury. And Coburg's back down the floor on a two-on-one. Now stepping in, shooting. DeMood makes the save on Scott Dominey. Dominey kicks it back up top is Ben French. Regrouping again for the Kodiaks. Keelan Pilon works it off for Milligan. Milligan being watched closely there by Barnable. Coburg can't set much up as seven seconds left on the shot clock, but they find the loose ball on the boards. Three seconds to shoot. They won't get a shot away. And they'll just send it as close to the net as possible. And DeMood will reset for Brooklyn. 
Good defensive stand there by the lacrosse club. Yeah, both teams so far are standing tall defensively. The goaltenders keeping track of those rebounds and making sure they're in front of that next shot coming in. Luke Pilcher in the corner. Works it back up top, Kyle Waters. He's got five goals, five assists on the season, but he's only played in two games as that pass gets intercepted and back down the floor go the Kodiaks. Chris Weir shoots, and DeMood kicks that one away. Great chance there for Coburg as Chris Weir had a breakaway. But Brooklyn able to get a stop and a big one from their goaltender. Centering pass, but unable to get the shot away was Kyle Waters. And a foul against Brooklyn in the offensive zone will send Coburg back down the floor. Coburg, a bit of confusion at the bench here. Not, not sure who's getting on the floor, but now they're settled and they'll play it back to French now. Just mishand mishandled that. And now Byrne looking to take it away for Brooklyn. Loose ball as he gets knocked down, and he's able to corral it and regroup, trying to get it away for Subak but taken right back by Coburg. Colton Armstrong right there, as that one got turned right back over to Brooklyn, and Carter McKenzie down the floor. McKenzie works this one back. Brady Kiernan plays it off to Ryan Lanchbury. A lot of the offense going through him as Lanchbury gets it back, fires a shot. That one gets stopped by Orlman. And Coburg able to reset and head up the floor once again. Just over five minutes into this first period. Lots of offensive chances, but some strong goaltending play to start this contest between two teams who are in desperate need of a win to climb back up with Peterborough and Six Nations. Simmons fires a shot that gets deflected wide, and Brooklyn looking to go back down the floor as the over and back gets called. And Brooklyn will set up in the offensive zone as they'll get possession of the ball in the corner. Kiernan kicks this one back for Bushi. Kiernan steps into the middle. Now a pass for Williams. He fires his shot, and that gets stopped. The first action we've seen of Dyson Williams, team leading scorer, 14 goals on the year. Six of those came against Colbert the last time they played each other as well. So he knows this team well, and he likes them. Surprised to see it almost six minutes into the first period on the first action we see of him in this contest as DeMood makes a save and a stretch pass just out of the reach of Ryan Barnable trying to stretch the floor on Coburg early. Ben French will regroup as that Brooklyn possession didn't have any legs as Barnable wasn't able to control the pass from DeMood. And Riley Curtis will set up in the offensive zone. Now here's French back to Curtis. He fires his shot. DeMood makes the save, ball rolls into the crease, and DeMood will reset. Looks like there might be a problem with Nick DeMood's stick, so he's looking to the bench to get a new one before the next Coburg possession, as that shot went right into the meshing above the head of Kevin Orlman. So Coburg once again will bring the ball back up the floor and have another offensive zone possession. Dylan Hutchinson kicks this one off to Joe French. Now driving in his longboat. Travis Longboat keeping it away from defenders as French fires a shot. DeMood makes the save and able to corral it in the crease before the Kodiaks could jump on it. Yeah, now, nifty little shot. Sorry, a nifty little shot there from Joe French trying to sneak that one through the legs. Bushi centering pass. He couldn't find his intended target of Jacob Saunders. And back down the floor goes Coburg with some numbers. Chance for the Kodiaks is a cross floor pass. Can't find its intended target. And Coburg looking to find possession in the offensive zone, but it gets trapped in the crease. And it's going to be Brooklyn ball. Yeah, give credit there to uh, Cormier. There defensively has the ball right now, but he's the one that got a stick in the lane there to negate that two-on-one pass coming across. Now a chance here once again for Brooklyn as that pass gets knocked down. And Kiernan regroups in the corner. Connor Kiernan waits, steps away from a defender, fights off a couple more and loses possession, but a shot comes on. Kiernan scores! In just his second game of the season, Connor Kiernan finds the back of the net for the third time, and Brooklyn breaks the goose egg on the board. Seven minutes, 59 seconds in, it's 1-0. Well, it was the point coming in, or the shot coming in from the point, rather, that, and the 
rebound sitting right there in the crease, and I believe we'll see here. Connor Kiernan, I think, reached into the crease with his stick to grab the ball and throw it in as he dove across. So there's the shot come in, gets the ball before the goaltender can grab it, and he throws it in right there on the far side and makes it one nothing. Uh, Brooklyn. Ryan High kicked out of the faceoff circle, so possession goes to Brooklyn. And so the lacrosse club back on the attack after opening the scoring, looking for another one, but Oralman makes the next save. Just a split second too late reaching out for that ball. And Connor Kiernan made no mistake for Brooklyn. As Brooklyn called for in the crease, and then a slash and another cross check there by Coburg as Luke Pilcher continued to hang on to the ball after the whistle, but it looks like we'll get a penalty on the floor. And it looks like Brooklyn will be going to the first power play of the game. And it is going to be called against Kevin Oroman. Two minutes for slashing. As Cam Milligan, the captain of this Coburg Kodiak's team, getting the explanation from the official. You'll see it right here as he comes over the top on Luke Pilcher. Yeah, right there, just on the left hand of Pilcher. And then, unfortunately for Pilcher, took a cross check and fell to the floor there. But we're going to see a look here at first special teams play of the game. Clock didn't set up first, so... Brooklyn got nine seconds of working the ball around before the clock could start. And we'll get a restart here as Brooklyn in the offensive zone on the power play for the first time in the game. That shot comes on, and Oralman makes a nice save. Coburg just trying to kill as much time off as possible here with possession of the ball. No shot clock running on the penalty kill as that loose ball gets kicked away by Logan Swanton. And Brooklyn gets it right back, still with a minute and a half on this power play. Ryan Lansbury quarterbacking this power play up top for Brooklyn. Kiernan works it off as Lansbury gets it off to Williams. Dyson Williams fires his shot, and that one gets deflected wide. Another great chance for Brooklyn, but down the floor, away go the Kodiaks. Colton Armstrong gets stopped by DeMood. Great stop there, the second breakaway stop of the game for the Brooklyn goaltender, Nick DeMood. And this Brooklyn team has to be feeling good with the play between the pipes that they've gotten early on in this first period. Yeah, they got that one nothing lead, and, and the goaltender's been solid all game DeMood has. And the defense as well has been also solid, and they've been able now to keep the ball down the floor for quite a bit of uh, quite a lot of time, resting their defensive players. who are going to hop on now. 45 seconds to go in the Brooklyn power play. Coburg starts with possession in the offensive zone over after the over and back foul against Brooklyn. So Simmons sets up and just trying to work it down. Shot clock running on this position here for Coburg. So the Kodiaks trying to get it down to 15 seconds before Brooklyn gets another power play chance down the floor as that shot was stopped by DeMood. And a loose ball picked up by DeMood behind the Brooklyn net. So one last rush up the floor for Brooklyn on this power play, which is more than likely going to trickle into some five-on-five -five play here. So Coburg doing a good job as... Williams works this one off. Pilcher steps in, and that gets stopped by Oralman. Now a stretch pass down the floor and a chance for the Kodiaks as they walk into the offensive zone. A drop pass and a chance towards the net as Roninchich gets stopped by Demood once again, but a, another great chance for Coburg in transition. Yeah, he worked that spin move on the defender and got a decent, decent look on net, but once again, Nick DeMood coming up solid for Brooklyn. Connor Kiernan works it off to his brother Brady. Peyton Cormier steps around the defender and in on goal, but Oralman makes the save. Kiernan finds the loose ball and flips this one off. Quick shot stopped by Oralman. Chris Bushy still looking for his first of the season, but he's been all over the offensive floor early on in this contest. Now Alex Simmons again for Coburg. As the Kodiaks working it around. Hutchison off to Simmons. 
Simmons plays it into the corner. Milligan, the captain, couldn't find his intended target. Rebound comes out on the first shot. And Demood making both saves there. Once again, standing tall in the crease for Brooklyn. And Dylan Hutchinson's going to want that look back. He had a point blank look right on net, right outside the crease. Nobody on him. Didn't even get slashed or any sort of defensive attack on him. And he just hit the goaltender square in the chest. Looking for a pick and roll play was Brooklyn as Kyle Waters couldn't get free heading towards the net. And Coburg brings it back up the floor. That errant pass heads down the floor, but that's going to be over and back against Coburg. So Brooklyn will get an offensive possession as the teams with 7.46 to go in the first period get a water break from the officials. And it's definitely needed. The transition game's been the whole game, it seems, pretty much, other than that power play back and forth. And Coburg, as you mentioned, a couple of solid breaks, uh, some two-on-one, some breakaway chances. And we're going to take a look again at that goal from Brooklyn, uh, courtesy Connor Kiernan now. And we, again, we see that shot come in from the point here as they dodge a couple of checks and eventually will circle around the shot in there. And then, it, look, no defenders around at all to take the man, Connor Kiernan, who grabbed the ball and threw that one in. And that's got to be a look that Colbert's going to look at again to say, why is there nobody there watching that man as the shot comes in? Well, and if you look at the shot clock, Kevin Orlman making 12 saves. A lot of the times early on in this game, he's trapped those loose balls. But that time, like we mentioned earlier, just that split second too late on Connor Kiernan. So Dyson Williams will get the restart for Brooklyn in the offensive zone as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club looking to extend their lead here. one nothing. We just saw the lone goal from Connor Kiernan. Just over 12 minutes gone in the first period. Dyson Williams fires and that hits the side of the net. I think Orlman might have got a piece of it as Williams looking for that loose ball in the offensive zone. And a nice play by Orlman to spring it free and his team able to regroup as Nick Ellerton works it up the floor. So Coburg once again regrouping in the offensive zone as Scott Delzato heads off to the bench. Now here's Simmons. Works it into the corner for Milligan. Milligan, cross floor. Riley Curtis had it knocked out of his stick as Chris Willman picks up for the lacrosse club. And Brooklyn able to regroup once again. Ryan Lanchbury setting up again in the offensive zone. Screen play is Pilcher was looking for Williams. Now a chance in front, and that shot goes wide. Ryan Lanchbury with a great opportunity, but unable to convert. A long shot gets kicked out by Oralman as he was falling down, able to trap it. And regrouping again is Colton Armstrong. Both teams getting strong goaltending, and that's been the story of this first period. Eight days ago when Brooklyn was in Six Nations, they had a 2-0 lead two and a half minutes into that first period. They went into the first intermission, tied 3-3 with Six Nations, and like we mentioned off the top, tied that game 10-10. So Brooklyn playing a tight game on the road against one of the top teams in the country in the Six Nations Chiefs, but unable to come away with the victory, they get the tie. And now looking for a pivotal swing game here against the Kodiaks. Driving towards the net once again was Chris Bushy. Again, been all over the offensive floor. Still hasn't recorded a goal on the season. And Riley Curtis sets up again for Coburg. Curtis gets an illegal screen there. Dylan Hutchison, and he's getting some shots after the fact. Jackson Subak taking exception, and we've seen it a lot, especially when Brooklyn's in transition down the floor, that the Coburg forwards and the Brooklyn defenders have really gotten into some jawing matches early on in this contest. Yeah, we'll see that here on that last play, the cross check from behind. And then the retaliation by Zubak there. And, and I'm unsure, honestly, looking there, if he thought the play was still going and someone had the ball. But that now it's clear that they're mixing it up after the whistle. But it looks like Brooklyn's going to get the only penalty here. There wasn't going to be a penalty call on Dylan Hutchison. It was just going to be a change of possession for Brooklyn. But then Zubak, taking exception, puts Brooklyn in the penalty box for the first time here today. Coburg with the first power play of the game for them. 
And they look to tie this game at one. Alex Simmons sets up with Milligan. Now here's French giving it back to Simmons. He walks in, gets some space, and DeMood kicks it out. Ben French regrouping again. Works this one off for Milligan. He fires through traffic, but Jordy Jones-Smith able to get a piece of it, send it into the corner, and it resets the clock again for Coburn. 30 seconds gone on the power play. Simmons back to the point for Milligan. French fires a shot to move the save, and Brooklyn able to find the loose ball in their own crease. Chris Willman brings it up the floor. Jordy Jones-Smith getting the switch before he heads to the bench, and Brooklyn relies heavily on him on the defensive end of the floor, especially on these power plays. Brooklyn in the offensive zone already taking 20 seconds off the shot clock as Dyson Williams sends it into the corner. Comes out in front, Pilcher couldn't find it, but a chance for Brooklyn, and that shot goes wide from Kyle Waters. Now avoiding the over and back, Ryan Lanchbury just sends it back into the offensive zone at the end of the shot clock. So Coburg will restart with 48 seconds on the power play and a fresh shot clock from their own zone. Great penalty killing there in the offensive zone by Brooklyn. Andrew. Yeah, you'd like to see Coburg be a bit more forceful there to try to get the ball back. And they still have enough time, as you said, now they're at 34 seconds left here in the power play, but they'd like to probably have a minute, you know, set up again in this offensive zone. Milligan up top. Sends it in for French. He was looking for a screen, but Pilon able to regroup. Milligan off for Simmons. Gets it right back as Milligan gets it again. Into the corner, DeMood makes a save, and Pilon picks up and resets the shot clock. 10 seconds to go in the penalty to Brooklyn. French fires a shot. That goes wide, and that goes down the floor. They're not going to say there was a tip from Brooklyn, so an over and back violation against Coburg, and Brooklyn is going to come away from this penalty unscathed and still up 1-0 with 340 to go in the first period. Yeah, and Coburg moving the ball well there, but going for some low percentage chances there close to the goal line on net when they had their leading goal scorer, Cam Milligan, at the point to work the shot through him. Bushi kicks this one out. Cormier flips it off to Dyson Williams. Williams, cross floor, quick shot by Kiernan. Bushi out in front, couldn't get that shot away on the rebound. You just see that dynamic playmaking from Dyson Williams. Played his NCAA at Duke. Very good NCAA school. Of course, his dad, Sean, inducted into the 2021 NLL Hall of Fame, first ballot Hall of Famer. Played a couple seasons here in Brooklyn in his time and put up some insane numbers that as well as Dyson can play, I don't know if they'll be matched. Is Subak getting into it once again? This time it's Joe French, and Subak is right back to the Brooklyn penalty box, and with 2.49 to go in the first period, Coburg's back to the power play, Andrew. Yeah, you might say that's not going to look good for his floor time coming up in period number two. Uh, two retaliatory penalties here as you're up one nothing, and you're just under three minutes to go in the first period. Looking to walk away with the lead after one, and now you're going to sit for two more minutes. Just the continuous jawing after the play from Jackson Subak has gotten Brooklyn into trouble down the stretch of this first period. A 1-0 lead for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And Coburg 0-for-1 on the power play off to their second man advantage of the game. And look for things to change here. They do sport the number one power play in the MSL. So see if they change things up here. Change a different look. Try to get a shot from a different angle. Milligan works it into the corner. Inside for Simmons behind the back, but couldn't get it on target. And Jordy Jones-Smith works it up the floor with Pilcher. Jones-Smith steps in and scores! Jordy Jones-Smith, his first of the season. It comes shorthanded, and it gives Brooklyn a 2-0 lead with 2.26 to go in the opening frame. Yeah, shorthanded goal there for the lacrosse club. Coming down there on a two-on-one shorthanded, you can see here as Jones-Smith picks up the loose ball, and he uses William as a decoy there, shakes off the defender and shakes the goaltender a bit, and takes the shot and beats Orlin for the 2-0 lead. 
just your pre-scout, Jordy Jones-Smith, a defender for Brooklyn, two assists on the year, no goals. Luke Pilcher driving towards the net. He has three goals on this season, so you'd imagine that Jordy Jones-Smith is going to pass that one off to his teammate, but he takes the shot, beats Kevin Orlman, and it's 2-0 Brooklyn. Coburg still with 90 seconds to go on this power play. Simmons sets up with Milligan again. Then French works it off to Milligan. Now Simmons. Simmons waits, shoots. Demood makes the save, and the loose ball gets picked up by Connor McClellan. It got turned over before he got to mid floor. So Simmons sets up once again for Coburg in this top power play unit for the Kodiaks, regrouping. French fires. Demood kicks that into the corner as Keelan Pilon battling against Chris Willman. And it looks like a broken stick on the play. Brooklyn comes away with the ball. And now a chance down the floor as Pilcher, fresh off the bench, takes it off the boards, and that gets stopped by Orlman. Great chance there as Rowan Kelly finds the loose ball and sends it back up the floor for Coburg, but Brooklyn had a great chance there. They got a favorable bounce off the stanchion. Couldn't convert on their second shorthanded goal of the game. Now a long shot. Milligan rang it off the post. Coburg setting up once again. Milligan steps down into the corner. Back to Simmons. He fires. Demood makes the save. And Brooklyn regroups. That's going to end the Brooklyn penalty with just six seconds left, but a 25-second shot clock. And the lacrosse club able to get things going as Peyton Cormier setting up in the offensive zone. Less than a minute to go here in period number one. Two nothing Brooklyn as Connor Kiernan flips this one off. Pass out in front, couldn't find Lansbury. And Rowan Kelly finds the loose ball. A transition pass down the floor. Scott Dominey takes a shot. French driving towards the net, but Demood able to trap that ball in the crease. And Brooklyn's going to call a timeout. Shot clock turned off as there's 22 seconds left in the opening period. Yeah, 2-0 Brooklyn here, but you can't blame Coburg for not trying. They got two power plays, and the second look there looked a lot better than the first try. They were getting some better looks on net on those shots. They were moving the ball around nicely like they were in the first attempt. But the second one there, they were getting clean looks that weren't so low-angled. And, and the thing for Brooklyn that's working out well is their defenders are coming in quick to get those rebounds. Whereas on the other end of the floor, we're looking at Coburg a little bit slower, and that's where we saw the first goal from Kiernan prove successful. Is there were no defenders there to pick up the loose ball, and he was able to capitalize. Whereas Brooklyn, on the other hand, did a great job at getting those loose balls and then moving it down the floor. You see in the shots on goal there, Coburg with 20. And you can kind of sense the frustration early on with the play of Nick DeMood in between the pipes for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. He's just been stellar. Two breakaway saves early on and continuously shutting the door in the first 20 minutes of play against this Coburg Kodiaks team who have been buzzing around the net. Yeah, no, and, and, and just looking here at the next 22 seconds, Brooklyn obviously took the timeout looking to set something up here for the last possession, hopefully for them, and looking to get the, a goal before the end. But what a gut punch that could be. A, a late third period goal didn't go down 3 nothing. You had two power plays and a lot of shots on net for Coburg. They're going to have to look at you know, what to do in the intermission here and, and regroup for period number two. Shot clock turned off. Nick DeMood on the bench for Brooklyn. So a six on five here looking to get the last shot of the first period up to nothing. Peyton Cormier out in front. Bushy gets stopped. And that loose ball gets picked up by Coburg, sent down the floor. But it won't make it towards the net before time expires. So the opening 20 minutes in the books, and it's a 2-0 lead for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. The opening goal scored by Connor Kiernan, his third of the season in just his second game played. And then Jordy Jones-Smith picking up the shorthanded goal for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club that has given them the 2-0 lead and some stellar play in between the pipes from Nick DeMood. We'll come back and take a look at some of the highlights from that first period. Coming up next, you're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV Durham.
This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Everybody knows not to drink and drive, but some people still think it's okay to take drugs and drive. Police have the authority, the ability, and the tools to determine if drivers are impaired by legal or illegal drugs. And because drug impaired drivers can pose just as great a risk as drunk drivers, they face the same penalties, like the loss of their driver's license, a criminal record, fines, and more. A message from the RCMP, the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, and Arrive Alive Drive Sober. The world's most famous Canadian, Grey Owl, just back from a triumphant British tour, is to be a reluctant guest at a gathering of First Nations. Archie, you may not realize this, but right now you are the most famous Red Indian in the world. These are your people. You have to be there. Come on, Harold. Let's go. Sure, Adam. Sure. His name is Archie Bellini, and if he's a Red Indian, I'm the king of China. It is an honor to meet the man called Grey Owl, who has brought much respect for our people. Imposter, rascal, dreamer, <laughs> and yet the Englishman who called himself Grey Owl <laughs> awoke the whole world to our vanishing wilderness. My brother says, men become what they dream. You have dreamed well. Hello, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen, host of Photos and Travel, where we bring the world to your doorstep. In our next episode, we're going to visit the German state of Bavaria and travel along the Rhine, stopping at a fairy tale castle. Join us right here on Rogers TV. Welcome back inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club hold a 2-0 lead through 20 minutes of play over the Coburg Kodiaks here in Major Series Lacrosse action. Once again, Jack Moore, Andrew Osmond joined with you for this game on Rogers TV Durham. And a lot of play and a lot of defensive play really dictating the pace of that first period, Andrew. Yeah, and a lot of it not just defensive in, in terms of the the style, the low scoring angle of it, but also on the offensive side with a, a lack of de a defensive play on the Coburg part, and then a lack of defense on the pout when they were on the power play to lead to those two Brooklyn, Brooklyn goals. So not so much, you know, defense is running the way, but also proving costly against you at, on the offensive side of things, at least for in favor of Brooklyn. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that first period and lots of action can be talked about even though there wasn't that much goal scoring but Brooklyn able to get out and running early on but it started in net from the move yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say too it all started from the goaltending side and we see the two rushes here from Coburg early on some two on ones and breakaways to move standing tall as we look here this will be the first goal here from Connor Kiernan as the puck or the ball rather gets picked up loose ball in front and then Kiernan's able to grab that and throw it on in for the first goal of the game and then there's another breakaway for Coburg. They've had their chances, but it's been Demood stopping the door. And here's goal number two, faking the two-on-one, and then the shot shorthanded comes in for the goal there. And that's where we sit there at 2 nothing after one period of play. Yeah, Jordy Jones-Smith picking up that second goal for Brooklyn, the shorthanded goal, his first goal marker on the season for this Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And we talked about it off the top. This is such a pivotal game in the standings. We know lacrosse is a fast-paced game. There's going to be more scoring as the game continues on here. But Brooklyn really got out and running, and they have to be quite happy with that first period of play. Yeah, Brooklyn definitely going to be happy about that. Coburg, on the other hand, probably a bit frustrated right now in the locker room that they had the two power play opportunities that were basically gifted to them, too, by the, by the retaliation on the defender for Brooklyn. So... They're trying to say, we had our chances. Why do we not capitalize? These are the kind of games when we get these breaks, you really got to capitalize on them. And that's how you get those big leads and get those advantages in this game. If not, this game's probably still locked up at zero, if not for those couple issues or, or, or even Colbert's on the board, um, if not for that. We have plenty more coming up for you in our first intermission. Stay locked with us. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV.
I'm Eric Marchinos of Cinema Scene and Review. Join me for a monthly movie roundup of new releases either in theaters or available to stream. See you next time in review. Hi, I'm Constable Gerald Rice, Durham Regional Police Service. Tune into Rogers Cable 10 to watch me on Senior Talk with DRPS. But we'll talk about all kinds of amazing information and community programs for you, our seniors in Durham Region. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. We can be hurt, we can be bruised, we can be broken, slowed down, confused, and even numbed. But we can't be defeated. We're built on a foundation that's strong, our mission unwavering, and together we'll beat as one. Hi, I'm Sean Lackey, and this is Sold with Sean Lackey. You should check us out if you want to find out what's going on in the world of real estate. We'll have all sorts of guests to keep you in the loop on what's going on in this wonderful world. Hey, what's good, everybody? I'm Karim Grant, a former professional football player. Do you want to know what current and former professional athletes are up to these days? Catch the Player's Corner with Karim Grant exclusively on Rogers TV. Welcome back as we bring you inside the Iroquois Park Sports Center here in Whippy, Ontario. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club with a 2-0 lead over the Coburg Kodiaks in this major series lacrosse matchup on Rogers TV Durham. My name is Jack Moore, Andrew Osmond. And Andrew, we continue to talk about that first period of play and we talked about how good DeMood was in net for Brooklyn. But really, the transition game is, is where things are going to be the big pivotal thing uh, factor in this second period coming up. Yeah, and especially in the second period, switching ends, longer changes, all that sort of stuff. We look for the ball to go right down the floor and wait for those guys to get on the on the court on the floor there to you know really capitalize on the offensive chances and also be prepared defensively as well. Might see a guy kind of cheat a little bit offensively just to just in case something breaks that they need to get off for a change for. Uh, so we'll keep a look for that and I'll, I'll, we'll we'll look to see if the, you know either side can take advantage of those miscues if they're if they're there for the taking and maybe someone capitalizes on those. You talked a little bit about it before we went to our last break, but Coburg comes in, the number one power play. They get two late power plays. They concede a shorthanded goal, and then they don't convert on the other one. So you talk about that frustration. What are some of the adjustments that need to be made heading into this second period? Yeah, well, it might sound kind of strange, but the second power play they had where they gave up the shorthanded goal almost was the better of the two power plays, if you were to ask me. They moved the ball a lot better there around the crease, and they were getting those high percentage shots. They weren't really taking those chances by the, by the uh, goal line there, low angle shots. Um, the thing I'm noticing, though, a lot from Coburg is they're trying to force the goals. They're trying to force it, whereas on Brooklyn, on the other hand, they seem to throw the ball on net, try to get the rebound like they did on the first goal and take advantage of a rebound. Coburg's trying to be a bit more methodical from the looks of it, and I'd like to see them kind of rush it and maybe panic a little bit, force, force some panic on the Brooklyn defenders instead of being so expected uh, here in the second period. Second period, so the team switch ends. As we get reset here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center in Whippy. And a big matchup here in Major Series Lacrosse between Brooklyn and Coburg. Is Coburg looking for a chance early on, but the shot gets whistled wide of Nick DeMood. And Brooklyn brings it right back up the floor for their first possession of the second 20 minutes of play. And Domini there actually had DeMood looking the wrong way. He just missed the net on the shot. So what a chance there for Coburg. That close to a goal, just got to get the shot on net. You're talking about it, it's not that Coburg hasn't had their chances. They've just been able, unable to convert in the first 20 minutes and 30 seconds. But now here's a chance for Armstrong down the floor. Colton Armstrong holding up, waiting for some help, looking to drop it off to Kelly. 
but it gets deflected into the corner, and Armstrong regroups once again. Peyton Cormier on the defensive side for Brooklyn as Cobra gets it right back and resets up top. Joe French gets the screen and works this one off for Keelan Pilon. Pilon kicks it into the middle, but that goes into the corner, and the shot clock expires. Brooklyn will get possession back and head up the floor. Fresh off the bench, Brady Kiernan. Dyson Williams heading towards the net as Bushi fires a shot that deflects off the boards and into the stands. It's going to be Coburg ball on that errant shot attempt from Chris Bushi, who was all over the offensive zone in that first period of play. Yeah, Brooklyn not looking to really take advantage of the shot clock there, just saying, I got a chance on that. I'm going to take it and try to surprise one here. Dyson Williams had a good screen to open up the shooting lane. A little bit too much there as that shot gets kicked away by Demood. Another save in his belt in tonight's contest so far as Jordy Jones-Smith picks up the loose ball. And Brooklyn works it back up the floor. Jacob Sanders playing it off for Kiernan, goes off the boards, and Sanders looking to get it right back as that loose ball can't be picked up. Romanchik picks up the loose ball, and Coburg's back the other way. Curtis Conley settling things down as his forwards get off the bench. Keelan Pilon works it off to Simmons. Now Longboat driving in. He gets wrapped up. A penalty coming up against Brooklyn as a pass into the middle. And a quick shot by Simmons gets stopped by DeMood. Shot clock resets. Coburg setting up in the offensive zone. Six attackers on the floor as Oralman on the bench. And a quick shot by Pilon gets deflected away. Chris Willman touches up. And Willman will head to the penalty box for two minutes. Two minutes, 32 seconds into the second period. Coburg to their third power play of the game. Yeah, we'll see what exactly happened here when they made that call. We see they're just at the top, just getting a bit too rough and getting caught there holding. And it's going to be the third power play, as you said, here for Coburg. Referee explaining it to the Brooklyn bench. Just got his stick wrapped around too much on Travis Longboat. So Chris Willman off to the penalty box. Coburg back on the power play, trying to break that goose egg on the board is Keelan Pilon. Gets it back down low from French. Ben French works that one off. Milligan shoots, loose ball in front of the crease. Subak, good job on the box out. And Brooklyn brings it back up the floor. Dyson Williams. Getting set up in the offensive zone, driving to the net, and that gets stopped by Oralman. Dyson Williams, who's been relatively quiet for his standards so far in this contest. Put that one on goal, probably his best chance of this contest so far to get his 15th of the season, but can't convert on Oralman. Now Milligan works it down low, and that shot by Hutchison gets stopped. A loose ball, Coburg looking to pick up, but some good defensive play by Ryan Barnable. He works it down the floor. Ryan Barnable driving to the net. That shot goes high and wide as that ball goes back over center as Jackson Subak unable to get to the mid-stripe in time. So Coburg will reset. 22 seconds on the shot clock, 31 on the power play. And the Kodiaks once again looking for their first of the game as that shot gets deflected wide. French up top to his brother, gets it back. That shot goes off the mask of Nick DeMood and Brooklyn's back the other way quickly. Carter McKenzie in on a breakaway and he gets stopped by Kevin Oralman. That end seems to be the one getting all the breakaways here tonight, Andrew. <laughs> You're right about that, just to our left here. All the breakaways, shorthanded, power play, five, uh, five on five, doesn't matter. It's getting all the breakaways. Coburg 0 for 3 on the man advantage so far in this contest. As it gets worked around the offensive zone, Alex Simmons back to Joe French. He couldn't control the loose ball, and away goes Brooklyn down the floor. A chance for Logan Swanton. In on goal, that gets stopped by Oralman. 
sprawling to get back as he was out of position on Logan Swanton. And Covert gets another big stop from their goaltender. Now here's Pilon, fresh off the bench, steps into the middle. That shot gets blocked. Brooklyn doing a good job of getting their sticks in the shooting lane here in the second period. Pilon sends it back for Simmons. That gets stopped by DeMood, and the rebound picked up by Connor McClellan. Yeah, Brooklyn again doing a good job defensively. They get, get the shots through and trusting DeMood to make that first save and then able to get the rebound. Another shot by Brady Kiernan. That one got kicked out away, uh, kicked away by Oralman. And back down the floor is Rowan Kelly with some speed. Now Owen down gets checked, but able to get it back to Kelly. Rowan Kelly with Ben French driving towards the net. Works it off for Milligan as the Coburg defenders get off the floor on transition. Around the back shot goes high and wide. Riley Curtis. Cross floor for Milligan, driving in on Subak, and that gets stopped by DeMood as well. A few great chances there from Coburg, but unable to convert once again. Nick DeMood standing tall in net for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club as they go back on the attack here. Chris Bushi gets a screen and turns that one over, and now a chance here for Coburg. Scott Delzato feeds that one in, but unable to convert on the pass to Chris Weir. A great chance for the two defenders for Coburg, but that's a reset for Brooklyn as they're back up the floor. Yeah, and Joan Smith doing a good job coming off the bench and taking away the two-on-one and then challenging the ball as well to cause the turnover. Lansbury steps in, didn't like his shooting lane, and flips it off to Kiernan. Connor Kiernan inside for Lansbury, and he scores! Ryan Lanchbury, who had some good chances in the opening period, gets his marker here in the second, and it's 3-0 Brooklyn. Well, you'll see on the replay when we show it to you, it's the quick cut by Lanchbury there to get to the front in front of that crease, and he gets the pass. You'll see it here as the ball pushes off his man, gets the ball back, and then goes far side and reaches around to Orlman to get make it 3-0 Brooklyn. So Coburg with some great chances at one end, being stifled between the pipes by Nick DeMood. And then Brooklyn getting the bounce the other way as there's a shot that gets blocked. And Brooklyn once again getting the sticks in the shooting lane as forcing a loose ball was Mike Byrne and quickly up the floor is Brooklyn. This one gets flipped off as Kyle Waters. He's been circling the offensive zone. Works it out for Bushi, but he couldn't get a stick on it. Peyton Cormier couldn't find it in the corner. And Scott Delzato's back up the floor for Coburg. Delzato flips this one off for Pilon. Riley Curtis steps in, shoots. DeMood makes the save. And... They'll get a whistle here on the floor and get a water break for the players with 12.09 to go here in this second period. But another big save and continuing on what we talked about in the first period, once again, Nick DeMood making big saves at one end and then they go to the other end and Brooklyn picks up a big one to make it 3-0. Yeah, and that third goal there by Ryan Launchbury, you can see it here, just watch him there. Pushes off his man on the left side of your screen. You'll see it, or he has, the, or right there, number nine. Watch this. He'll push off his man, create that space, and get the inside lane, get the ball, and then reach right around Orlin to get that ball in the net to give the three nothing lead. But a great play there, drawing the drawing the defender into him, and then pushing off him, getting that space, and providing the obvious pass there in front and a clean shot on net. And in tight quarters too, able to keep his footing, not to step in the crease and get that one in behind Kevin Orlman to give Brooklyn a 3-0 lead here as Brooklyn will get the restart back from their own end and it will be Ryan Lanchbury after his fifth of the year to get the restart for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And Colbert still out shooting the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club 28-21 at this point in the game. Connor Kiernan, down low for Lansbury. Steps around the net. 
Into the middle for Dyson Williams, but he had that one taken away. Rowan Kelly on the nice defensive play against the top goal scorer for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, Dyson Williams. Hutchison plays this one off for Ben French. Now a cross floor pass as it gets worked back to Alex Simmons. Simmons drives in towards the net and he scores! Alex Simmons, his second game of the year, his fourth goal of the season, and he finally breaks through for the Coburg Kodiaks into that Brooklyn lead. They pick up their first marker over 28 minutes into this contest. Yeah, you mentioned that's his fourth goal of the year, had three in the only other game he played. So surprising, not surprising, so to say, he got a goal here today, but you can just see he got around his man and then was able to just get it over the shoulder of Demood and get them on the board. So now it's 3-1 Brooklyn here, about midway through the second. So Coburg trying to pick up some of that confidence that might have been lost in that first period after peppering the Brooklyn net with shots, but coming away with nothing. Alex Simmons gets on the board for the Coburg Kodiaks, and they're looking for more here. Joe French fires a shot. to move, kicks that one away. And Brooklyn able to force the defensive zone turnover as Mike Burns down the floor for Brooklyn. And they set up in the offensive zone. But that pass gets taken away by Scott Delzato. And once again, up the floor is Nick Ellerton. Hutchison. Works that one off for Ben French. Steps in and fires a shot over the head of Jordy Jones-Smith, but DeMood able to get a left arm on that one and kick it away. Jones-Smith, who had a goal in that first period. Short-handed marker brings it back up the floor for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And Connor Kiernan steps off the bench, switching spots with Jordy Jones-Smith. Bushi puts one towards the net, but that one gets deflected away by the shoulder of Kevin Orlman and back down the floor of the Kodiaks. That shot gets stopped by Demood. Loose ball in the crease, but able to find it is the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Logan Swanton making a nice defensive play. Luke Pilcher works it out for Connor Kiernan. Steps in off the backboard. But this one gets picked up by Coburg, and Chris Weir's back up the floor. Weir stepping in, taking a shot that gets kicked out by Demood, and Subak trying to force a loose ball. That one gets picked up by the Kodiaks once again as Colton Armstrong steps in, and Demood makes the save. And it looks like a penalty coming up here against Coburg will send Brooklyn to their second power play of the game as Coburg had too many men on the floor. So an important power play coming up is Brooklyn heading to the man advantage for the second time here tonight. They're 0 for 1 in this contest. Yeah, 0 for 1 in this context, uh, contest rather, and 27% successful on the year. They'll look to make that a little bit better on this attempt here, and it's only the second look that we're getting so far in this game. Setting up in the offensive zone is Waters. Now into the corner is Pilcher. Kicks it away, and Williams works it into the corner. Lansbury cross floor pass, and Pilcher gets stopped there by Orlman. Loose ball on the floor. Brooklyn trying to pick it up as Brady Kiernan has his stick tied up. And that will reset in the offensive zone for Brooklyn. So a great job there by Brady Kiernan to tie up his man and pick up a Offensive zone possession here. Lanchbury fires a shot that goes wide and bounces back down the floor. Away goes Colton Armstrong on the over and back. And the restart gets a chance, but a good job there by Dyson Williams. 
Started his career at Duke as an attacker in field lacrosse and then got moved to the midfield. And you see some of that defensive play there back on the two-on-one for Coburg. And then he's trying to move it up the floor as well and take advantage of the misstep by Brooklyn. Kiernan fires a shot that goes wide. And Lansbury will set up once again. And Dyson Williams scored, but an illegal screen called against Brady Kiernan. And that will draw a crowd back in the Coburg zone. Dyson Williams not happy that the goal didn't count, but Brady Kiernan with a clear illegal screen. And it looks like the only penalty coming out of this is going to be to Dylan Hutchison. No, they are going to send Brady Kiernan as well. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's an original call or just retaliatory. We'll take a look here. You can see it on the middle of your screen, just a hard, hard pick there. And then the retaliatory for you saw there, two now big cross checks after the play. And to, to be to be honest, I didn't see much from uh, Brady Kiernan after the play, so might just try to get them both in there to settle things down. But it does look like there's one extra player in the Coburg bench at the or the box rather. That would be the original penalty to Coburg as Brooklyn was on the power oh play. But it looks like it'll just be the two minors on the board. So one to Brady Kiernan and one to Dylan Hutchison. As Cam Milligan getting the explanation from the referees, trying to sort things out here as it looks like Brooklyn will stay with the man advantage. 8.15 to go in period number two in the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club with a 3-1 lead here on the Coburg Kodiaks. There's a lot of yelling coming from the Coburg bench. Uh, getting some new different players on the floor. They only... I think they're trying to figure out whether this is going to be a four on three or a five on four. Yeah, because there's... And it is going to be a five on three. So it does look like there was two minors assessed there to Dylan Hutchison. So a five on three for Brooklyn. And as they started play, the clock didn't run. So Coburg, who's already on edge on their bench, continuing to jaw towards the officials, but they get things set up, and a five-on-three for Brooklyn sets up now. Williams works it out for Bushy. Cormier couldn't find it in the corner, and that gets worked up the floor by Curtis Conley. Conley being checked by Peyton Cormier. Brooklyn leaving a guy down the floor, and a good choice there is... Coburg only has three on the floor, so you can afford to lose a defender. Is a quick pass across floor, but Dyson Williams unable to convert there on the pass from Peyton Cormier. That ball sent down the floor in the air, and pass gets scooped up by Connor McClellan. And the defender will work this one off for Bushy and get a change here as Brooklyn still has eight seconds on the five on three. Lanchbury off to Bushy. That gets stopped by Orman. Loose ball right out front, and Kiernan couldn't get it away from the Coburg goaltender, Kevin Orman. So it's now five on four for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club for just under a minute here. So Coburg escapes that five on three unscathed. Dyson Williams. Left it for Lansbury as he gets it back up top from Bushy. Williams back to Lansbury, back to Dyson Williams. Now works that one off, but the pass got deflected. Bushy finds it off the boards. Now a pass into the middle, but Williams had it knocked away, and away goes Coburg down a man as Scott Dominey was down the floor, but unable to get that pass from his own end. And Coburg resetting in the offensive zone. Milligan off to Riley Curtis, driving towards the net, put a shot that goes wide. Now that ball not controlled, over and back against Coburg, but Brooklyn has a chance here. Lanchbury shoots, and that gets stopped by Orlman. Yet another breakaway on that side of the floor as well. That one coming on the power play as well 
for Brooklyn, but we're now back to five on five. So a five on three and an extended time five on four. Brooklyn can't convert. Peyton Cormier gets stopped once again by Oralman, but they convert there. Continuing to put pressure on Coburg. They're unable to convert on the power play, but Luke Pilcher able to bury home his fourth of the year and give Brooklyn a 4-1 lead. Again, a bit of a messy situation defensively there for Coburg, and Brooklyn's able to take advantage. We see it here as the ball gets thrown, and the Brooklyn gets the ball back, and then just right in front there, nobody looking for the open man, Pilcher, and he's able to sneak that one past, and you can kind of see it on Kevin Orlman, a bit frustrated defensively there to say, how was that guy wide open to get the ball and throw it in? Second time we've said that, looking at the replays on the goal, the first goal of the game scored by Connor Kiernan. And now this one to give Brooklyn a 4-1 lead here with under six minutes to play in the second period. Now Kiernan. Works it back for Lansbury. He fires a shot. Orlman makes the save and kicks it into the corner. Now some pushing and shoving right in front of the Coburg net as Rowan Kelly steps in and Chris Bushy not happy with Ryan High. And it looks like we'll see some more penalties on the floor here or maybe just one and it looks like it'll go to Chris Bushy. So Coburg concedes that goal to go down by three once again, but they're back to the power play for the fourth time here tonight. And that's the third time there's a somewhat of a retaliatory penalty as well against Brooklyn. This one going the way of Bushy and give credit to Ryan Hayes. You can see after the shot here, just on the right side of your screen is where it'll start, or right in front rather, right there. And Ryan Hay did a good job of just accepting that a couple times. There's about the third one that he didn't force ba cross check back and drew the penalty. So Milligan sets up with Hutchison and Coburg midway through the shot clock looking to convert on the for the first time on the power play as French works it off to the corner Simmons he shoots that goes off the post and into the crowd but they're going to say that Nick DeMood got a piece of it so it'll stay Coburg ball in the offensive zone and a fresh shot clock. Hutchison steps in that shot goes wide comes out in front DeMood makes the save and quickly back down the floor is Brooklyn. Carter McKenzie driving in and a shot from Kyle Waters. He scores. Second short-handed goal of the night for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club and they extend their lead to four. It's 5-1. And you'll see it here. Kyle Waters just sneaks behind the defender, comes right off the bench on your left side and sneaks right behind the defender. No idea he's there. He gets the pass and then throws that one in on a partial break on the quick transitional play there, shorthanded by Brooklyn. Once again, shorthanded getting another goal. Foul coming against Brooklyn on the faceoff. So Coburg will get the restart at mid floor and Simmons will set up in the offensive zone. Now four goal lead for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club as that mountain for the Coburg Kodiaks just getting higher and higher to climb back into this one. French fires another save by DeMood as Jackson Subak finds the loose ball. Yeah, and this Kodiak power play looking more and more crucial after that shorthanded goal. Milligan gets it back up top, finds the shooting lane, and DeMood makes another save there as Coburg going all out on the ball, sprung a loose ball, but the Kodiak's able to find it again as Nick Ellerton works it off for Ben French. Milligan off to Simmons. Now French fires to move the save. Subak finds the loose ball, keeps it away from pressure and works it up the floor. Ryan Barnable spinning away from pressure. Now a penalty coming here to Coburg and Alex Simmons not happy about it. 20 seconds to go. Shot clock and penalty clock about even here. So Brooklyn will more than likely go directly to a five on four unless Kyle Waters shoots and that loose ball goes into the crease. Kiernan tied up with Kevin Orlman. So that penalty will be called with six seconds left on the Brooklyn penalty. So we have four on four for not a lot of time and then Brooklyn's right back to the power play. Yeah, and Alex Simmons pleading his case there, but it's one of those unfortunate situations. There's the player with the ball actually kind of just ran himself into the arms of 
Alex Simmons and drew the penalty. Nothing he really kind of did proactively. It just kind of worked out that way. And he got called for the penalty. So we'll see, as you said, four on four here for about six seconds. And then we'll see another Brooklyn power play. So don't expect a whole lot of pressure early on in this attempt on the offensive zone possession by Brooklyn as they wait to get their player back on the floor. Dyson Williams off to Lanchbury. Williams gets it back. He shoots shouldered away and back down the floor is a chance for Scott Dominey. Dominey towards the net. In on goal and he scores. So a short-handed goal for the Cobra Kodiaks gives them some life here as they're back down by three and get their second goal of the game in second of this second period. Yeah, it's Scott Dominey with a little help from the glass there and a spilling, spinning ball to really slow it down there. It looked like Cormier thought that was going to ring down the defender. A bit lackadaisical, and then right off the glass there, it stops up for him so he can get on it and then get right to the center of the floor and have a good angle on net. And he makes no mistake there, shorthanded to get his squad back within three. So Brooklyn still on the man advantage. As they will pick up the loose ball off the faceoff. And set up back in the offensive zone. Luke Pilcher, fresh off the bench, is Lanchbury. Works it off for Bushi. Kiernan and Bushi work it back to Lanchbury. Dyson Williams, back to Lanchbury. He works that one down low is Bushi. Back to Lanchbury. Controls down low. Good shot by Kiernan, but a better save by Kevin Orlman. Now that loose ball picked up by Lanchbury and a fresh shot clock here for Brooklyn. Kiernan for Bushi, and he scores! Power play goal for Chris Bushi. And the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club regained that four goal advantage, it's 6-2. Looking up the scoreboard there is Orlman. Not happy with the six goals his team's given up there as Chris Bushi able to just cut in, find a, find a seam, and throw it on in as we take a look here. It started right there, and then just right on the near side there by the crease, throws it in, and Orland just walks away instantly, a bit dejected after allowing that sixth goal in. Foul by Coburg off the ensuing faceoff, so Brooklyn back to the offensive zone again, this time five on five, as Kiernan steps in and shoots a ball that goes wide, deflects into the meshing and out of play. About 35 seconds left here. It's five on five, they're having problems working the clock here as there's still time up on the power play, but it is five on five, and Scott Delzato's down the floor. Delzato keeps it. Pilon looking for the rebound, but he couldn't corral it. And regrouping is Coburg in the offensive zone, and a foul against Brooklyn will give a possession in the offensive end to the Kodiaks. Joe French works that one off for Keelan Pilon. Elon back to Riley Curtis. Now Alex Simmons fires a shot. And Nick DeMood stepping out of his crease to kick that one away. And Brooklyn picks up the loose ball. Carter McKenzie. He's had some rushes here in the second period with the long change. But Brooklyn turning it over to Coburg. And the Kodiaks are back down the floor. Ryan Hay off to Ben French. French setting up in the offensive zone with 70 seconds to go here in the second period as that shot gets stopped by Nick DeMood. And Brooklyn's back down the floor with Ryan Barnable. Lansbury couldn't find the loose ball down low. And Coburg regroups. Romanchik off to Hutchison. He fires and that gets deflected. In, oh, sorry, that went straight into the meshing, so oh, it's Brooklyn ball. I saw what you saw there. I saw a bit of a deflection, but the official obviously did not. 
Lansbury. Fires a shot and he scores. Right between the wickets of Kevin Orlman and Ryan Lansbury gives Brooklyn a 7-2 lead with 36 seconds to go in the second period. Now, I don't have my stat sheet in front of me, and I haven't been tracking all the style of shots, but I would say about half the shots on net from Brooklyn have been this type of shot, trying to go between the legs, and that's the first one to go in such as that. We've seen that multiple times, and Orlman's been able to handle it, just not there on that one. So it was a 2-0 Brooklyn lead after 20 minutes of play. Outscoring Coburg 5-2 here in this second period for a 7-2 advantage, but Coburg looking for a response late. Alex Simmons setting up, and a timeout called here by Coburg will give them time to think things over as the shot clock and game clock both at 25 seconds. Yeah, we'll see if Coburg can get back to the goal column a little bit here as things are getting a bit of out of control for the Kodiaks. And we'll take a look again at that last goal there from Ryan Launchford, his second of the game. And you'll see him on the left side here just spin off the attack and just throw a shot on net, kind of unexpectedly to anybody on Coburg. And that one squeaks through the wickets, as you said, Jack, and makes it 7-2. to two. So a big second period here by Brooklyn. And the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club has to be happy with this output here in the second period. We talked about the big goaltending play by Nick DeMood in the first period, but really getting that offense going here in period number two. Yeah, they've been able to score some goals this season, not you know lacking in that category at all in terms of five games played. And I believe if I look at my sheet here, as I just looked at it, 49 goals coming into today, and now they've scored seven. They average about 12 a game, so about on that pace, which isn't too bad here in the MSL. But it's more to the Coburg side of things that aren't really finding the twine today. So they did change the shot clock. Three second differential between game clock and shot clock here. 12 seconds on the shot clock, 15 on the game clock as Hutchison regrouping. And setting up for one final shot here is Pilon. Off to Simmons. Cross floor for French, and that is a time count violation. And Brooklyn calling that they should have three seconds to work it up the floor, but that will end the second period of play as the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club put five on the board in the middle frame. They allow two, but seven goals gives them a five-goal advantage through 40 minutes of play here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center and a chance to pick up their second victory of the year and their second victory of the year against Coburg. We'll have some second period highlights coming up for you next. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. It isn't the heavy trays that make the job difficult or the fast pace you need to keep up. It's not working another double because someone called in sick. What makes the job tough is the moment you realize a customer has had enough and you have to make that decision not to overserve. Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. We know it's not easy, but we're counting on you to keep us all safe. Thank you, servers, for doing the tough job. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Monsieur de Champlain, when I finish paddling through this wilderness and reach China, I shall greet them wearing this. Monsieur Nicolet, your mission shall be for the honor of the king and the holy faith. In the summer of 1634, Jean Nicolet set off from Quebec to find a trade route that would link Europe and North America with China. But where is it? 
Further, I know the place you are seeking. For months, Nikolai pushed through the wilderness, searching for the Western Sea. Goja, Mississippi! What did he say? He said, Mississippi, great water. Mississippi, the sea, China. Jean Nicolet was wrong. It was Lake Michigan, not the Pacific. But others would follow his dream, Joliet, La Salle, the Laverandres, and they would map most of North America from the Rockies to the Gulf of Mexico. Second period from the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club as they hold a 7-2 advantage over the Coburg Kodiaks through 40 minutes of play in this major series lacrosse game from Whippy, Ontario. Jack Moore and Andrew Osmond join you once again. And Andrew, as we take a look at the highlights from that second period, a lot of great play from Brooklyn putting them ahead by five goals here. Yeah, it was all Brooklyn really in that one as we take a look at some of the goals in that second period here. And it was Launchbury a couple times that was able to get a goal and get free. And it's, you know, we talked before about the defensive plays on both ends, you know, kind of hindering the Colbert Kodiaks. But in that period, it was really, there's a, there's one of the goals there from, uh, I believe it was uh, Alex Simon or Domini on that one. And then we see, well, just the pressure here from Brooklyn. And, you know, I was talking about the defensive lapses. There's one of them right there for uh, the Kobach, uh, Colbert Kodiaks, rather, that were going up the floor when they didn't have the ball just yet. And there's on a break coming off the bench. It's 22, Kyle Waters getting the ball, and then he actually heads, you can see him here, he heads right off. He was literally on the floor for 30, like three seconds just to score the goal. Here's the shorthanded marker by the Colbert Kob Kodiaks. And just at that point, we thought that they were getting back into it, getting a shorthanded goal, but then it was all Brooklyn there from here on out. As we see Launchbury, giving the ball off and then near side the goal there from Chris Bushy kind of surprising Orlman and was looking for a call or something like that after the play and then here again Launchbury or uh, yeah Launchbury just throwing that one in between the legs and that's what we see after two periods of play and we sit at seven to two as you can see the score sheet there and shots 40 32 in favor of the Kodiaks over the lacrosse club after 40 minutes. Well, and that really tells you how good Nick DeMood has been in this contest. 38 saves so far. Coburg averaging 20 shots on goal per period. They're averaging one per minute in this contest, but they've only been able to beat the Brooklyn goaltender twice in this game. And Brooklyn really looking to drive that forward. And really, you think about this game and you talk about how a complete game is really what Brooklyn was looking for. And when you have a guy like Dyson Williams who has 14 goals on the season in five games played, he really hasn't been an offensive threat here for Brooklyn, but they're getting it done at both ends of the floor. And to kind of piggyback off that point you make right there, yeah, uh, Dawson not on the score sheet so far in the goal column in this game. They have seven goals, Brooklyn does, and from six different players. So they're spreading the wealth, six guys uh, on seven goals, and, and your top guy is not even the one putting it in the net. You're looking good if you're Brooklyn. Brooklyn really happy with the result, and we'll be back with more right after this. You're watching Major Series Lacrosse on Rogers TV. A lot of you feel like you aren't able to be who you truly are. What's most important, more important than everybody else knowing who you are, is that you know who you are. As a young person, time moves slower for you. And just know that things will get better. It Gets Better Canada is a registered Canadian charity with a focus on uplifting our queer youth through the power of digital storytelling. As a two-spirit person, I use they, them pronouns. But that's not the case for every two-spirit person. There are so many voices out there that we didn't have 10 years ago, 20 years ago. No matter what your mind tells you, you really are perfect the way you are, so stop beating yourself up so much. I'm gonna be a boy in a dress, because why not? Your identity is explosive. We all have our unique journeys, but one thing that connects us all is the desire to be happy, the desire to celebrate being our authentic selves.
everybody out in TV land. Are you a struggling artist looking to catch a break? I'm the BMD, and I'm starting a new show called Meet the Band. My new show showcases up-and-coming artists locally in the Durham region. The show promotes the artists and their creative content on the Rogers Cable Network. So tune in and connect with me at the BMD Podcast at gmail.com. At the Iroquois Park Sports Complex here in Whippy, Ontario, home of the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, who have a 7 2 lead through 40 minutes of play on the Coburg Kodiaks. As we talk about how important this game was in the standings, Andrew, and, and looking at it for Coburg, they have three more games in the next six days. And they've, they're playing the top two teams in the league in Peterborough and Six Nations. This looked like it had to be the gettable game for them to climb back closer to Brooklyn in the standings. But as of right now, they're facing a five-goal deficit heading into the third period. Yeah, and I don't want to say it's all at a loss so far in the rest of this game for the third period, but it almost feels that way for Coburg as they've been in the game for most of it and just the back half of that second, letting it slip a little bit. But you mentioned Peterborough and Six Nations are their next contestants over the next week. You know, tight, tight games, tight turnarounds against the top teams. This was the gettable game. But moving forward for Coburg, you're, you're only down five. It's, it's definitely doable to come back in this one. They have that top power play coming in. If they can draw a couple more retaliatory penalties and get the man advantage and kind of chip away at that early on, I would say they definitely got a shot. You don't want to count them out because they are, you know, able to put the ball in the net. But it, it does look like a tough hill to climb for them. Well, one of the reasons it's been such a tough hill to climb for Coburg has been the play of Nick DeMood, who's been absolutely phenomenal with 38 saves in this contest so far. Yeah, it's been DeMood, and as we look at some of these highlights, he was solid from the start, and, and we, we said it was a goaltending defensive you know, game early on in this one. And as we take a look at some of DeMood's highlights, he's stopping everything. And, and you know what the biggest thing for him is? Controlling those rebounds and the defensive team for the defensive players, at least for Brooklyn coming in, getting those balls out of the crease and up the floor. There hasn't been a lot of scrambly plays defensively there for Brooklyn, uh, which is what you want to see if you're the, the lacrosse club. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club looking to close this one out. It would be their second win of the season, their second win against Coburg on the season. And Nick DeMood is a big reason why they have been playing so well. 38 saves on 40 shots like you see on your screen. And that's been the big difference maker. We talked about it all throughout the first two periods. Not that Coburg hasn't gotten their chances. They've just been stuffed at every turn by Nick DeMood. Yeah, and I think that partly it's Coburg trying to force the typical play, right? Whereas Book Brooklyn, I've noticed today, they're kind of a bit more scrambly, moving the ball around a lot quicker and getting shots on net, getting those rebounds. We've seen a couple, you know, quick passes right in front of the crease, taking advantage of some defensive laps. As for Coburg, they haven't really had much of that. It's been kind of status quo, pretty expected. So not to, not taking it away from Nick DeMood today, but it's kind of been an, an average sort of attempt from Coburg, that, what you might expect. Not, no real surprises tonight. Well, in coming into this game, Nick DeMood hadn't gotten much of the lion's share in between the pipes for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Riley Hutchcraft has gotten most of the play early on in the season, and that's something that's different for him because he spends the NLL season with Toronto, where he's Nick Rose's backup. He comes to Major Series Lacrosse. He gets the first couple starts of the year, and then Nick DeMood comes in here today with 38 saves as Brooklyn back on the attack. Kyle Waters gets stopped on the rebound attempt for the lacrosse club, and Colton Armstrong back down the floor for Coburg. Armstrong stopped by DeMood once again. Same song over and over again. Nick DeMood continuing to make saves. Again, Colton Armstrong with a quick transition chance. Yeah, and on that breakaway on our left side, it's something slanted here on the floor that's providing the breakaways. Pass out in front for Bushi, and a penalty coming up here to Coburg. And it looks like Rowan Kelly will get the gate. No, sorry, that's Owen Down will get the gate for two minutes for cross-checking. So... Chris Bushy, who has been all over the offensive end of the floor, he broke through on the score sheet, then forces Owen down to take a penalty there in Brooklyn. 48 seconds into this third period, are back on the power play, a chance to make it a six-goal game. Yeah, we look at it here, it was just a stick up high on the cross-check as uh, 
timekeepers are trying to sort something out or the penalty wasn't right on the clock yet so they weren't really ready to start play now it's there and we'll get underway Ryan Lanchbury setting up again up top for Brooklyn is Dyson Williams we've talked about not really getting much into the offensive action in terms of scoring as a pass down low for Kiernan and that shot gets deflected by the shoulder of Oralman. Now Cole Armstrong, who has already had a chance here in the second period, is bringing it up the floor. And again, we talk about Dyson Williams and how good he is on the offensive end of the floor, but there's that midfielder that we saw in college with Duke, able to make some defensive plays too when needed here as his team back on the offensive end and setting up on the power play with 18 seconds on the shot clock. Dyson Williams off to Lanchbury. Bushi to Kiernan. That shot goes wide, but it goes right to Lanchbury. Quick shot by Pilcher, and that shot missed the mark as well. Lanchbury, long shot, and that gets stopped right at the end of the shot clock. So nothing doing there for Brooklyn as the time count violation goes against the lacrosse club and the Kodiaks back up the floor, but unable to control the ball at the offensive end. And with 43 seconds to go in the power play, back on the attack is Brooklyn, a chance and they score! Great passing and a great finish. Ryan Lanchbury and a power play marker makes it 8-2. His third goal of the contest. 8-2 is the score now in favor of Brooklyn. You can see it's just on the transition here. The Kodiaks were cheating a little bit here, trying to get a shorthanded goal, a bit slow to get back into the zone. You only see three Kodiaks in your frame right there because Stu, uh, Simmons rather was still in the offensive zone on that last rush and probably pushing it a little bit is what Kovrig's trying to do, take advantage of some possible defensive mistakes for Brooklyn at this point, trying to be a bit more risky because that's what the chances they got to take at this point, you know, but that's what happens, it costs you. Riley Curtis plays that one off as Romanchik trying to get something going here for Coburg. Stopped at every turn. Alex Simmons has one of the two goals for the Kodiaks as that ball in the crease is going to be a violation against Coburg and Joe French on the foul there as Jordy Jones-Smith jawing with Alex Simmons on their way back to the bench and Brooklyn's way up the floor. Connor Kiernan steps into the middle, finds a lane, flips it off. Pilcher shoots it wide. It goes into the meshing and it's Coburg ball. Curtis Conley works this one off for Keelan Pilon. Pilon waiting for his team to set up as Alex Simmons back on the floor. Cam Milligan out in front, another save by DeMood. And Brooklyn quickly back up the other way with a chance here is Zach Young bringing it up the floor. Lanchbury into the middle, down low. Kiernan gets stopped by Orlman. And Coburg trying to get a quick transition chance here, but the pass to Romanchik just out of his reach, so that gives Brooklyn time to regroup defensively. Ben French. Now Simmons off the bench. That gets stopped by DeMood, and Simmons sends it into the meshing in behind the Brooklyn net. So once again, another empty offensive possession for the Kodiaks. Yeah, and the Kodiaks are kind of allowing Brooklyn to make any kind of pass they want at this point. Brooklyn's getting some good shots on net, controlling the play. The Kodiaks, as we've seen so far, are just kind of sticking put and kind of playing a zone defense as we see that. Bushi steps in the crease before that one went in. A great chance for Brooklyn, but Bushi robbed a one there as his foot was down just a half step too early. Now Coburg quickly back into the offensive zone out in front and that shot missed the net. Nick Ellerton looking for the chance there, but unable to convert once again. Not even generating a shot on that offensive chance for Coburg and Lansbury setting up again. Ryan Lansbury creating space, drops it off for Bushi, and that time it connects. No doubt about it on that one. Chris Bushi gets it back after the foot in the crease violation, and Brooklyn makes it 9-2. Just as Connor Kiernan was complaining that his stick got thrown into the corner, 
doesn't matter because Bushi grabs the ball and has an easy shot on net, and I believe he goes five hole. As we see Kiernan on the left just say, where's my stick? And then the ball makes its way right into the slot to Bushi and makes no mistake to make it 9-2. That dynamic play of Ryan Lanchbury drawing two defenders and a third looking at him opens up Chris Bushi right out in front, and after he had just beaten Kevin Oralman on that exact spot on the chance out in front where he's called on the crease violation, he gets it done again. So Brooklyn taking advantage and continuing that offensive momentum that they picked up in the second period. And that's the advantage of Launch Lon Launchbury having the three goals today, you know, drawing the attention as you were saying. There's a reason why they got to do that, but it costs you. And we just see Brooklyn piling it on now. Peyton Cormier, the big body, 6'2", 230. Leaves it for Brady Kiernan, who works it in behind the net. And a quick chance by Lansbury, but Oilman there to make that save. And Coburg will bring it back up the floor just over five minutes into this third period. And Brooklyn has broken open a seven-goal advantage here. Riley Curtis off for Cam Milligan. Milligan works it off. Simmons towards the net, and that shot missed as well. Now Jones Smith trying to push the floor as Brooklyn brings it up. A chance for the lacrosse club, but that shot gets stopped by Oralman. Jordy Jones Smith gets the pass from the corner. Chris, Chris Willman will settle things down and Brooklyn with a seven goal advantage lets the defenders get a chance to boost the offensive numbers, but they couldn't convert on Kevin Oralman there. Connor Kiernan. Flips it off, and that gets taken away by Owen Down, who's up the floor, the long strides of the Coburg defender. Longboat going to the net. Romanchik fires off the post. Couple posts here tonight so far for Coburg. As this one down the floor, Dyson Williams finds it. Williams with Mike Byrne out in front, off to Byrne, and he stepped in the crease, so it's going to be Coburg ball. But again, we talk about the dynamic play of Lanchbury. All the Coburg defenders drawn to Dyson Williams because of his offensive prowess, and it opened up Mike Byrne in front. Yeah, and that's the advantage of having two guys that are hot right now is you can't, you gotta pick one, right? You gotta pick who are you gonna watch this time and hope for the best. Now that shot gets kicked out by DeMood into the far corner. And once again, Zach Young regrouping things for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. Slowing it down is Ryan Barnable as Lansbury back on the floor again and setting up midway through the shot clock. Bushi driving towards the net, but that pass goes wide, and Peyton Cormier gets checked hard into the corner, but able to keep the ball against two defenders. Finally kicked out of his stick. And a chance here. Coburg has to be quick to get up the floor. They only have two seconds to get over mid-floor, and they finally do. As that shot on Demood gets stopped, and they'll settle things down. You have eight seconds to get over mid-floor in Major Series Lacrosse. Four seconds to get out of the crease. New rules this season is Connor Kiernan. Out to Chris Bushi. Bushi. Plays it into the corner, looking for a man out in front. It goes over the head of Oralman. And a crease violation against Brooklyn will send it back up the floor for Coburg. Kodiak's looking to get something going here. Maybe even a little bit of momentum as they have to play three more games before Brooklyn plays their next game. So the schedule not doing any favors this week to Coburg. And that shot gets stopped by DeMood. And we talk about it, this is the gettable game. If you look at the schedule, four-team league, six nations in Peterborough, up at the top of the standings early on. Coburg making up some of the games that they've lost early on in the year. Six nations has played six games. Peterborough and Brooklyn have played five. As that shot goes off the post from Brady Kiernan. Yeah, and those games aren't coming at a great time. And after this kind of result as we see it right now unfold 9-2 they're you know in the gettable game that we said that they could get you know out of all these this is the one they wanted and then they have a tough week ahead now just to try to get back to 500. That loose ball picked up by McClement back in the Brooklyn zone and for Brooklyn it was a team who eight days ago went to Six Nations and they lost or they tied that game 10-10 but a, a gettable game for them and and probably some of that confidence building. Hey, we can play with the best teams in this league. 
and now coming out here tonight, getting the goaltending on the back end, and then finally in the second period, getting that offense to break through, and now with a seven goal advantage, 9-2, with 11 minutes to go in the third. Alex Simmons sets up his pylon. Tries to go back to Simmons, bounces off the wall, is a chance out in front, and what do you know, Demood making another save there for Brooklyn. And now a chance down the floor again for Brooklyn as Chris Willman works it off. Kiernan scores! Double digits on the scoreboard, 10-2 as Connor Kiernan Makes it an eight-goal advantage for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club with 10.36 to go in the third. Yeah, we'll take a look at that goal, but all, while the guys take a water break here, and you can just see he had all the floor coming down the slot, and Coburg was slow to come on the come on the floor and cover defensively, so a bit of an odd man rush the other way, and Kiernan makes no mistake and capitalizes there to make it 10-2, but I'm a bit more surprised here, though, Coburg at least you know they're they're taking those risks and taking some of the gambles but I haven't seen in the last five minutes or so of play any sort of rush or effort you know it was 9-2 for a bit there going back and forth but no sense of urgency to try to quickly get back in this one maybe they're cutting their losses and trying to move on and save some bruises for later well you see some of the empty possessions early on in the third period the frustration boiling over of early on playing relatively well in the offensive zone but not getting anything past the mood two power plays in the first period that they couldn't convert on one of their two goals is short-handed here tonight as alex simmons fires a shot to mood makes the save it bounces through the crease and connor mcclellan picks up the pass or picks up the loose ball sends it for a chance out in front and brady kiernan scores so first it was Connor Kiernan to make it 10-2. Now it's Brady Kiernan to make it 11-2, just 32 seconds later. And it was all Connor McClellan from the other end of the floor with the long lead pass as we see that coming into your left, or the bottom of your screen rather, is Brady Kiernan getting that lead pass all alone and makes no mistake there to make it 11-2 as we near the halfway point of the third period. So Jordy Jones Smith steps onto the floor to take the face off for Brooklyn, who have really found that offensive groove here in this game. Five goals in the second period, four goals already here in the third. And a nine goal advantage. With just under 10 minutes to play here against Coburg in this. Major Series lacrosse matchup. Pilon steps in. Demood makes another save. Now Pilon off for Simmons. Alex Simmons didn't want to force anything as he had a fresh shot clock. And Ben French will regroup as Pilon fires a shot. That gets stopped by Demood once again. And Zach Young will slow things down for Brooklyn, who only have two seconds to get over mid floor and they're going to say that they did that was close as kyle waters couldn't get the pass nick ellerton works it back up the floor for coburg is owen down finds riley curtis and down will now head to the bench looks like he might have stayed on for that offensive chance milligan he fires, the moon makes the save. Longboat fires the rebound shot that goes wide. Ben French flips it off for Milligan. Now works it back to the point for Hutchison. Curtis off for Milligan. Travis Longboat working against Subak. Longboat drives in and he puts a shot wide. He was looking for the bottom corner on the far side. Now another shot and that gets stopped again by DeMood. Now Subak giving a cross check to the face of Ben French and they're both gonna go as slow to get up was Mike Byrne right in front of the Brooklyn net. Referee looked like he was gonna let that one go but when Jackson Subak took exception and gave a cross check to the head of Ben French. Referees called both and it's gonna be four on four lacrosse as Brooklyn will have the ball in the offensive end and 
And we can see it there. It was Ben French with a loose stick in a region that is not appreciated by many on the floor, which uh, caused Zubak to retaliate with that cross check, his third retaliatory penalty of the game. Still getting the minutes on the floor, but that's the third now that he's caused his team to go down. Well, it looks like they will do five on four. They just were late to get the penalty up on the board. Brooklyn had five on the floor, but Demood was off to the bench, so maybe they were thinking that they wanted to try a five on four where well, they could, and then the first man back would be the man that Demood would go on the floor for, but it is going to be four on four for the next two minutes. 8.16 to go here in the third. And you got something out And an unsportsman like. Oh conduct call it looks like was called against Coburg so Scott Delzato has to go to the bench for two minutes I wonder if something was said from the bench didn't look like something on the floor must have come from the bench there on that one and they'll probably offset those first two minors now and have a five on four I would imagine or if they might go four on three here and it looks like that will be the cause a five minute major put up on the board against Coburg so Dyson Williams sets up on the four on three power play for Brooklyn Kiernan worked it off for Bushi and Dyson Williams couldn't get a stick on it Williams out in front and that shot gets stopped by Oralman Back up the floor is Rowan Kelly who evades the check from Bush. He stays on his feet, spinning past the Brooklyn defender and works it out for Alex Simmons. Simmons behind his back gets stopped by Demood, and Brooklyn gets another big stop from their goaltender on that transition play shorthanded for Coburg. Kyle Waters working it off with Pilcher, Peyton Cormier. And Waters up top. Peyton Cormier steps around the defender. Now Pilcher fires and he scores. Luke Pilcher, another one for him in this contest. And the power play goal makes it 12-2, a 10-goal advantage from the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, who have really found their offensive game in the second and third period. Yeah, and I don't know if it's partly to do with Brooklyn, just all the confidence they got, or if it's Coburg just sitting back a little bit. So you can see here defensively, they're a bit slower to, and both both uh, defenders there going towards the attacker and leaving both guys down low, wide open on that chance as we see there for the second goal from Pilcher. So it'll still be four on four, as that was a four on three goal for the next minute and one second. And it'll be a three-minute power play still, a major against Coburg. So that one won't end until the penalty expires. Goal won't end that one as Bushi steps in. Tyson Williams driving towards the net, gets turned away by Colton Armstrong and heads back up top. Pass goes off the back of Curtis Conley to the, the defender. Brady Kiernan steps in. Kiernan goes down and he goes into the crease with the ball still in his stick. And then Connor Kiernan, the brother, stepping in for his brother and Colton Armstrong. And Connor Kiernan still giving it to each other as Armstrong goes to the Coburg bench. Yeah, a lot of jawing going back and forth on that, that there with uh, Kiernan giving it to the. Kodiak player heading off. Simmons setting up. Nice pass down low for Milligan, and he scores. Some sense of relief from Coburg after a nice play finally results in a goal for them. That time it's the captain, Cam Milligan, and it's a nine goal advantage for Brooklyn now after Coburg gets their third of the game. But we see it there. This is one of those I'm talking about. It surprise plays that Coburg was able to pull off. You're not expected there. A quick pass and then a quick shot by Milligan. The guy who I was going to say you haven't really talked about too much tonight as one of their top players for Coburg. And he gets on the board as you expected he probably would. But with only three now for Coburg, you know, it's kind of surprising that he hasn't gotten on the board at all. The captain of the team, the leading scorer, came into the game with seven goals and 13 assists on the season. So he picks up his eighth of the year. 
And Brooklyn now on this final leg of the five minute major penalty against Coburg. So they have two minutes and 50 seconds on the power play still. And Dyson Williams regrouping with Peyton Cormier. Lansbury pass down low right over top of the net, but Connor Kiernan couldn't find it. Knocked off the ball by Colton Armstrong and back down the floor is Nick Ellerton with some speed. Nick Ellerton to the net and he scores. Nice do-it-yourself play for the first of the season for Nick Ellerton short-handed. And it doesn't look like Coburg will just be giving up in this one. Still showing some fight late in this contest as Nick Ellerton with a nice goal there. And yet another one shorthanded. And by my count, is that the third shorthanded goal for Coburg? And only one even strength. And you almost think, is this an advantage for the Kodiaks at this point? Catching Brooklyn on their back heels, being able to take advantage and run down the floor now twice on this penalty kill. They've been able to do so and capitalize. Just giving a wipe down to the crease right in front as Nick Ellerton went driving hard to the Brooklyn net. But a nice goal there from the Coburg defender. And the Kodiaks can be happy with some of the fight they've given, but just the offense hadn't been there so far in this game. No goals in the first period, two in the second, and now two here in the third. But Brooklyn with five goals each in the second and third period in this contest. Still with an eight goal advantage under six minutes to play and still on the power play for another two minutes and change. Kiernan finds Williams, switches spots. Nice pass down low and Lansbury gets stopped by Orlman getting back to the post. Brooklyn not taking any chances as well. Still, still putting their top power play unit out there to try to get a 13th. Kyle Waters couldn't control the pass from Dyson Williams. Williams picking up the loose ball and evading the defender. Now Waters fires. That gets stopped by Orlman. Pilcher back to Kiernan. Works that one off. Lansbury setting up in behind the net as Williams fires a shot that goes wide. Knocked down by Waters, but then picked up by Romanchik. Lansbury trying to force a turnover going back the other way. Still a minute 15 seconds on the power play for Brooklyn. 18 seconds on the shot clock for the Coburg Kodiaks. Milligan, he shoots. Zach Young got a foot on that one. Those ones are always stingers as Peyton Cormier down the other end of the floor couldn't reach that high pass, but corrals it in the corner. Bushi shoots. That gets stopped by Oralman, and then Bushi steps into the crease. Kodiak setting up again, still 40 seconds left on this major penalty. As Travis Longboat working against Connor McClellan. Longboat stepping in, Wade shoots off the post. And that's gotta be five posts now in this contest for the Coburg Kodiaks. Just been unable to find the netting in behind Nick DeMood, but able to beat him on some of these shots. Yeah, for Coburg tonight, if it's not hitting the post, it's hitting the goaltender square in the chest. They haven't obviously only been lucky as we can see another one there. Connor Kiernan once again burying three seconds left on the power play. 13 to four for Brooklyn with 319 to go in the third period, continuing to explode offensively. Now that's four guys. I know that's the third goal for Connor Kiernan, but four guys for Brooklyn in double digit or at least a multi-goal game for them. And three others with one goal as we take another look here. As you can see him down low, get the ball and then cut towards the crease. And before he reaches the restricted area, he's able to throw it in over the right shoulder of Orman. So another big one from Brooklyn and a response. And the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club are well on their way to their second victory of the year. Both coming against this Cobra Kodiak's team. 
And really, we talk about it, complete team effort as Peyton Cormier fires a shot, and that gets stopped. And it's going to be Brooklyn ball on the side on the reset. But Brooklyn's offense not able to get going early. It was 2-0 after the first period as Dyson Williams sets up up top. Williams spinning away from defenders but lost the ball. Kyle Waters couldn't spring it free. And back down the floor is Coburg. Curtis Conley works this one off to Joe French driving to the net. Subak is going to get a penalty after Nick DeMood made the save. So once again, Jackson Subak to the penalty box with two and a half to go here in the third. But the point I was making before, Brooklyn's offense not there in the first period. Two goals, one was shorthanded by Jordy Jones-Smith. But then when they found that offense in the second period, they continued to get the goaltending from Nick DeMood. And it's really been a complete team game for this Brooklyn lacrosse club. Yeah, and as we talk about DeMood, he's about to head to the bench, I think, for... A repair or something. Just needs a repair on one of those shin pads. Two and a half minutes to go here in the third period. And a two-minute penalty on the board to Jackson Subak. His fourth of the game and only first during gameplay. Yeah, that was Joe French driving towards the net for Coburg. Trying to get a scoring chance. Nick DeMood making the save. Again, for this Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And Cam Milligan will reset again for Coburg as time winding down here in the third period. Alex Simmons steps in, and he scores! Gets the screen from Cam Milligan and rips it past Nick DeMood. So 12 seconds into the power play, Coburg gets another marker on the board and I'm not sure exactly who's getting the assist on that one but if you can add a third assist you're going to give it to Cam Milligan for causing that screen and giving the, the defensive struggles to the Brooklyn lacrosse club as we take a look here you'll t see him in the slot he's going to give off that pass and now he's going to just head right in front of the crease and cause a disturbance there that allowed Simmons to just cut through and get closer to the net and get that fifth goal for the Coburg Kodiaks so a little bit of a morale booster for this Coburg Kodiaks team. As Ryan Hay called on the faceoff infraction, so it's going to be Brooklyn ball. Eight goal lead for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club, 13 to five here in the third period. Dyson Williams couldn't find the loose ball out in front and a long stretch pass from Kevin Orlman down the floor, but it gets taken away by Ryan Barnable. Brooklyn still had half of their forwards on the floor who couldn't get off during the transition. Coburg leaving Alex Simmons down in the offensive end as Dyson Williams sets up in behind the Coburg net. Williams into the middle. That shot gets deflected and made it on. And Orlman able to make the save. Back down the floor, here's Nick Ellerton. He had a nice short-handed goal earlier in the period. Got snuffed out there by Dyson Williams, and Alex Simmons gets that ball knocked out of his stick as Brooklyn regroups in their own zone, getting pressured in a turnover, bounces into the crease, but corralled again by Chris Willman. That one sent down the floor and into the meshing with 102 to go in the third period. Coburg getting a fresh shot clock here under a minute to go here in this contest where Brooklyn really put it all together to pick up a big win and you look at the standings this season Andrew where Six Nations and Peterborough at the top Brooklyn and Coburg down at the bottom these games against between these two teams are going to be the ones that decide some playoff positioning here. Yeah, no, they definitely are. And, and you know, look at Coburg facing uh, Peterborough coming up a couple times, and then next week is where we'll see Brooklyn face Peterborough. And they're only uh, as of right now, but we're going to see the, the standings change and the points change after tonight now. Brooklyn right now is only three points back. We'll only be one point back of Peterborough. So if Coburg can maybe help out 
a bit, <laughs> help uh, Brooklyn out a little bit and tighten that gap up. Next week, we never know if Brooklyn can get that victory against Peterborough and really leapfrog into second place in this uh, in the MSL. Time expires here on the third period. The Brooklyn Lacrosse Club with a big 13-5 victory over the Coburg Kodiaks. A stellar performance in between the pipes by Nick DeMood. If you're going to pick some three stars, he would definitely be one of them. And a lot of players getting it done on the offensive end on the, of the floor. A complete team win here tonight for the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. And they pick up their second win of the year, their second win against the Coburg Kodiaks, who have a tough stretch heading down the next week. Brooklyn is off until next Wednesday when they take on those Peterborough Lakers, like you mentioned there, Andrew. Yeah, no, that's going to be a week off. And after a victory like this and the tie against Six Nations for Brooklyn, that's going to be a, a well-deserved week off. And then with just the optimism moving forward for the lacrosse club against Peterborough, a team that if they can get a hold of, maybe they make some noise as one of the top two teams here in the MSL. Both teams congratulating each other on a hard-fought game. And a reminder, we will be with you next Wednesday, July 13th, 8 p.m. The Peterborough Lakers take on the Brooklyn Lacrosse Club right here at the Iroquois Park Sports Center. We'll have the coverage for you on Rogers TV Durham. Andrew Osmond, my broadcasting partner, our phenomenal crew here at Rogers TV Durham. We thank you very much for joining us here tonight. We will see you next week. Brooklyn wins this one 13 to 5 over Coburg. It's the major series lacrosse on Rogers TV.